Again, we want to find the derivative of a function, which is defined in terms of a definite integral with a variable bound. So suppose we have gx equals the integral from 0 to the sine of x of e to the power minus, two, minus t squared. And we want to find the derivative of g. Well, as a first method, we discussed the possibility of taking a primitive of e to the power of the integrand directly. So this would mean that we need to find the primitive of e to the power minus x squared. But here this will not work. There is no function, no easy function that could solve or help us with this problem. Yeah, e to the power minus x squared does not have a primitive in the functions as type of the functions that we know. But method 2 helps us out here. So define fx as the primitive of 0x, as a primitive of e to the power minus t squared. Since e to the power minus t squared is a continuous function, this actually defines a primitive by virtue of the main theorem of calculus part 1. So we know that the derivative of capital F is e to the power minus x squared on R. Now we may use the chain rule of differentiation to find the derivative of g. Since the derivative of g is the derivative of the composition of f and the sine, capital F and the sine of x, so we get f prime the sine of x times the derivative of the sine, which is the cosine. Yeah, so here we get e to the power minus sine squared x times the cosine of x and of course the derivative sine should not be used over here. So the lesson here is that even when we cannot find an explicit primitive of a function we still may calculate the derivative of of a function which is determined is specified in terms of a definite integral with a variable bound.